All right, folks. When I read about radios on the internet, handheld radios, walkie-talkies, ham radios, amateur radios, uh, you see a lot about FRS and GMRS services. And these are frequencies that are set aside by the FCC that are less restrictive than other frequencies and are available to people for use. What I see when I read about these services is a tremendous amount of confusion around what's allowed, what's not allowed, and when it's appropriate to use them. So what I wanted to do was a quick video and just add to the confusion. Anyhow, when you look at these, uh, it's FRS is Family Radio Services and GMRS are General Mobile Radio Services, I believe, and maybe I'm wrong about that. But uh, what they are are a set of frequencies that overlap each other and they are governed by what is called rule. Uh, there are certain rules around using these. For FRS, you do not need to have a license. For GMRS, you do. You don't need to pass any tests for your GMRS license. You just need to apply with the FCC and pay a $65 fee at this time. And then you are granted a license with a call sign. And when you use GMRS, you have to self-identify with your call sign when using that particular frequency. Like I said, some of these frequencies overlap. And you'll see uh, common channel names associated to each frequency for these 22 channels. Um, and they do that so when you go to the store and you buy like a bubble pack radio, like a Midland or a Cobra, they'll typically adhere to these particular channel names and associated frequencies. So that way you have interoperability depending upon the brand of radio that you're using. You can also use blank radios that you buy and you can program these channels in yourself. When you take a look at these, the FRS frequencies are channels 1 through 14, and they share channels 1 through 7 with channels 9 through 15 of GMRS. When you're operating on FRS, you are limited to a half watt or 500 milliwatts of power, and then you operate in 12.5 uh, kilohertz bandwidth. Now when you use GMRS, which is a little bit more range, it's a little bit more power, you're allowed to operate up to 5 watts, and then your bandwidth, your max bandwidth consumption is actually 25 kilohertz, so it's twice as wide. Anyhow, I'll provide a link to this chart below, so that way you can look at the frequencies, and you can look at the power output and the bandwidth limitations. Um, also, there are some usage notes over here, specifically around GMRS, if you want to use repeaters and things like that. So what I did, so I could learn more about these things, is I went to the FCC's website and I did a search for Family Radio Service, and I'll provide this link below as well. And it just tells you what the what the service is. It's a private two-way, very short distance uh, voice and data communication service. And when they say short distance, Family Radio Service is really only reliable at around a mile. When you have things like woods, houses, buildings, cars, highways, walls. Uh, blocking your path is going to really limit your ability to communicate over distance. A lot of times when you buy these bubble pack radios, they'll say, this radio works for 30 or 40 miles, and that's just not true. So here's some background. The FRS is the 14 channels that we talked about. It talks about some of them being shared with GMRS. And the rules specifically around family radio services are Part 95, Subpart B of the Commissioner's Rules, or the Commission's Rules. Now here is a website that shows you what those rules are. So here's subpart B of Title 47, Part 95 for FRS. And I'll provide a link for this below as well. And it goes through your general provisions, talks about locations, types of communications. Uh, this talks a little bit about the unit of itself. Well, so a lot of people buy these radios like Baofengs or other cheap amateur radios and think that they're allowed to use them on FRS. And to be eligible for FRS, the radio itself has to be certified, and the manufacturer of that radio needs to apply for certification. And really, it's uh, limited to things like no internal modifications can be made to the radio, and it needs to have an attached antenna. Um, it doesn't, you can't use power amplifiers, so all your transmissions are really limited to a half of a watt. Let's go back over here talk a little bit around uh, FRS a little bit more. So here's where it talks about it being licensed by rule, which means that you do not need to have a license. You can go to Walmart, you can go to Target, any store like that, and you can buy bubble pack radios that are certified for FRS. Go right out and use them and talk to your buddies and your friends. Anyhow, down here it talks a little bit around 
FRS and I'm sorry, GMRS and FRS dual service radios. And when you use these radios, you really need to make sure, and they talk about them being available from retail or discount stores, that if you are going to operate on shared channels with FRS and GMRS, that you set, here it talks about your power, that you set your power at the lower end of the spectrum, at the half watt. Sometimes with these radios, you can turn up and you can actually broadcast on FRS at 5 watts, which would be a violation of the rules. Taking a quick look at GMRS, this is, what, this is the one that's a little bit more complicated because you do need to be licensed and you do need to use your call signs. It talks about how it's available to a man or woman. <clears throat> when you buy the license, it, that license extends to other members of your family. And you can use this for public, I'm sorry, for private services. Like if you have a, a uh, trucking company or if you have a distribution center, you can use GMRS radios under license to conduct your business. Now, when you buy a license for yourself, it only extends to people in your family. It does not extend to other people in your business. They will have to procure their own licenses as well. And it talks about the license being issued for a five-year term, and it can be renewed 90 days prior to the expiration date. That way you can retain your call sign, which is kind of handy. This is just a quick rundown of the channels. Um, this isn't as informative as the first link I showed with the channels. Um, I will link this below, but the other chart has probably got more and better information. This talks about operating a GMRS system, where it talks about it consists of operators, a mobile station, you can use handheld units, and uh, there's some rules about your antenna. In GMRS, your antenna does not need to be affixed to your radio, and it says you can mount it uh, no higher than 20 feet above the ground or above the tree for which it is mounted. You see that right here. Uh, what I don't understand is if you mount it in a tree that is uh, 40 feet tall, can you put it at the top of the tree? I, I don't know. It seems a little bit unclear with that. And here it talks a little bit about you and your family members and communicating. Um, and I believe that there's some language in here also about using it at, uh, at work. Now, some of these uh, frequencies obviously cross the border with Canada. So there's some specific rules around FRS and GMRS rules along the Canadian border. And you can read those here. And then this is the same verbiage about the GMRS and FRS dual radio bubble packs that we already covered. And then the last thing that I'll be linking is this is um, Title 47, Part 95, Subpart A, that talks a little bit about general mobile radio services and the different things that are required for this. Like, for example, I can go down here and click, and it talks a little bit about station identification. And it says that you need to use your call sign, essentially. And it talks about time intervals when you go ahead and you use that. Other than, fa other than that, folks, I really don't have much more to add. Like I said, I just wanted to do a quick video and contribute to the confusion around these two radio services. Thanks, everybody.